show here we go I am back with a new fat tire update or a tire update in general this is for my Brompton bike this channel is not a Brompton channel it's not even a bicycle channel if you're new here this is a channel for anything that runs on small wheel which most vehicles are so even more most cars would be included in any case I ride a nickel plated Brompton and I got a flat with my fat the fattest tire that you can get for the Brompton this is a 16 by 1.5 as opposed to the typical 16 by 135 and I got flat it's been a year that maybe a year and a half that I mounted this tire and as you can see this is a racing tire this is very lightweight there is no tread on it of any sort and uh, there is there are no patterns so this is definitely not for the winter it's not for you know rainy times or puddles because it can seriously slip but I love the tire because it can go down to 40 psi and that's the legal rating of it it also looks great it's a little bit more fat more full looking than the skinny tires th that uh, the Brompton bikes come with this is not a tire endorsed by Brompton in fact Brompton does not sell tires at this at this range w the one thing I discovered though I used to have this tire and if you check out my previous video I used to have this tire with my custom fenders mounted and those are beautiful fenders and they even fit and I removed them and then I put put try to put them back on but I found that when you add the full brace for the rear fender the one that comes here th it takes up five millimeters and this fatter tire is so close to the fender wall it's actually gonna freeze the tire you won't be able to pedal so you can run these tires on standard sized Bromptons with standard sized fenders mounted but you have to take out the cent center brace you are only running the, the braces on the on, on the, the far end and you should check out my video then where I talk about the, the the sizing of the tire and everything so I went flat and I hate to f hate to uh, stick my hand into the dirt so to speak in the middle of the street so I walked a mile and a half to a subway tr uh, station in Manhattan took the subway home I had to walk it up the steps in several stations and this bike may weighs minimum 40 pounds so that was not a pleasant experience but as you can see when I took it home I completely quick detailed that everything is clean everything is is good speaking of fenders though I might want to go back to fenders for the cold season for the summer it's not really essential but during the cold season everything from twigs to mud to wet sand to foliage when the foliage begins to fall and not even snow but like the, the salt they put out they in New York at least they put out an insane amount of salt even if there's gonna be no snow if if there is a danger that one snowflake falls down they are gonna cover the streets with salt so it I just had to do so much cleaning without the fenders uh, for the, for the last early spring or so that I'm definitely putting them back on if I can if I can fit them but but I have already fit them so if you remove this brace I'm, I'm talking about it should be n a no-brainer so what I did was first of all to work on the Brompton I prefer to use precise wrenches the 15 millimeter is mostly what you need to remove the rear wheel and I recommend that you don't use adjustable wrenches because those wrenches are not precise and you can easily screw screw up a, a nut or a bolt or something that you want to remove I absolutely took apart the bike and this the rear of the bike and this is something I always do I clean everything so that it looks like a restoration sort of I marked the position of the valve to find out what caused the puncture it had to be some needle-like object that punctured the tire I mean uh, went through the tire and, and it went into the inner tube and then it came right out because I found absolutely nothing absolutely nothing 
I cleaned everything, the cog, the, the hub, everything had to look like perfect. And instead of putting in a new a new inner tube, I decided to just patch up the existing inner tube. It's not a bad patching, it should work. I think for m most cases you, you don't need to replace the tube. You can just put on a patch really. And to prevent another flat, I bought this tire liner which as you shall see is probably as almost as good as what you get with a, a continental tire that fits the Brompton or with the Big Apple made by Schwalbe which is probably the best tire I've ever had not on the Brompton but on my on my birdie uh, which has a fitting size so I put this up and obviously it was too long because it was designed for a 20 inch wheel or 20 inch rim and I followed the instructions on the box and I <coughs> did not trim the excess length but I overlapped it this was a very bad decision so this is how it looked I think it's a gorgeous tire I love the reflective side of it and you can see the sizing is a 349 but it's a one and a half inch width so it's a little bit a little bit wider than the typical 1.35 but it, it's not exactly a fat tire. I just call it fat tire because on the Brompton it pretty much is. It is the fattest tire that you can fit on the Brompton with the standard wheels and rims. So I, I did everything perfectly. I inflated, deflated, uh, made sure that the gaps are all okay. You have a little bit of a gap here more than over here but I think it's a pretty good mount. And then I put it back on onto onto the Brompton. It took a while because I haven't had a flat in since six or seven years when I bought the, the, the bike, the rear of it. I used to have the Marathon tires which never got flat so I never had a flat. The last time I had to remove the rear wheel was when I, I, I was upgrading to this fat tire. So to make a long story short I ended up getting a flat after a few hours of riding and I was so angry what caused the flat was that the edges of, of this tire liner are sharp enough to cut through uh, the inner tube under pressure so I made a mistake with this but I followed the instructions on the box that's what it said and and that little bump where the two overlapped it, it actually f was feeling a little bit bumpy not a lot but a little bit so I'm not giving on the tire, not, not giving up on the tire liner. They cost about ten bucks each. They give you a lot of protection. And next time I'm going to trim it, and where the two ends meet, I'm going to put tape on it to make sure that this is never going to happen again. But you know, I was just so upset that I ended up not putting the tire back. I threw away this tire, and I bought uh, another Schwalbe Marathon tire which I guess might be a bit of a bit of an excess. I don't know if, you, if I even have a picture of that. Do I have a picture? No, I don't have a picture, but if you look at the previous video, you can see on my Brompton that the, the rear tire is now skinnier, um, 1.35 Schwalbe Marathon, and the front is still the fat, the fat one. So if you, you click on the link below, you can go to my resource page and you can see the tires I recommend. I recommend you check out that selection. What happened with, the, with this fattest tire of all, the Green Speed Scorcher, is that they have removed that beautiful sidewall thing, that, that reflective uh, part, and they have made it even lighter. Since this tire is made for racing on a trike, this makes sense for the majority of the people who buy this tire but uh, I'm really not happy about it still I I'm, I'm refuse to give up on this tire because it's so much more comfortable so much more it gives you so much better of a road feel in general that I'm not ready to go back to the marathon just yet so once I get tired with that marathon one of these tires is going to go back onto the rear wheel the front I still have this thing so I will see how long it's going to last. It's lasted for a year and a half without a single flat 
doing even uh, slight off-roading so I'm really not complaining it might work but I want to show you well, one of the tire one of the tires I'm recommending all the rest of the tires on 135 this tire size so it's gonna be very tiny uh, tire size and because it's a, a 1.35 they cannot give you a tire nobody can make a tire that runs at 40 psi because the, the tire volume is the air volume is just too small so you have to step up to at least 65 which is not very pleasant and look at the price this is a German made tire and uh, you pay for it I have no problem with the Taiwanese made tires I think th th those are good quality tires most of this stuff is made in, in Taiwan and I don't know the weight of this thing but the Continental is definitely heavier tire you can see it and it has it doesn't have a Kevlar but it does it does have a tire liner built into the tire and you can see that it's not very thick but it gives you more protection than the Scorcher which is my favorite this one it gives you more protection because it's built into the tire the rubber is thicker and, and stuff it weighs 285 grams oh, what did I click on and now we, we go we're going into the Schwalbe selection check this out there's a new tire from Schwalbe and it's called the green marathon the pattern is actually not like the marathon but the thickness is very much reminiscent of that so you can expect a Kevlar in it you can see that this is a 16 inch tire but 349 millimeters a lot of people get confused and I tried to address it in previous videos the typical classic 16 inch is just a th uh, 305 it's not a 349 so 349 is significantly larger and the standard rim of the Brompton is not gonna take a 305 as it is you can see that the PSI only goes down to 65 you can't make it and look at the weight 410 grams almost twice the weight of a Continental but this this bike this tire was built for sturdiness and and for that these marathon tires are as, are as good as you can get from anybody and look at the price $32 it's not a lot of money what's most interesting is this they have a size that is 16 by 175 and here we go back to the standard diameter or the typical popular diameter of 305 it's still a very heavy tire and look at the PSI it goes down to uh, 45 the reason this is interesting is because up until now we have only had mostly the the Big Apple in 16 by 2 size and in order to run that on your bike you can see this is the Big Apple you have to change the rim and you can see that the rim diameter gets a lot smaller this is the standard 349 that comes with the Brompton and this is that that that's a much uh, smaller rim I don't think the rim has to be any wider because I, I was able to switch to go from 1.35 to 2 inch width on my birdie without doing anything to the rim so I think this rim could take it if there was space here but there's no space and here you can see that the triangle is custom the, f the front fork is custom this is my favorite fork these are titanium forks this set would set you back over a thousand dollars and then plus installation redoing the wheels or buying new wheels the, the the disc brakes I mean the cost of this a hub gear in the rear you're not gonna get out under I would say twenty five hundred dollars for this kind of an upgrade so for this kind of money I would say just get a get a molten or get a birdie and, and then you can run these heavier tires with them but what's interesting is that with this new size this is not two inches wide this is 1.75 you might be able to mount it without replacing the fork and, uh, and the triangle but this is not for certain I haven't taken any measurements I would have to remove the wheels to do that and that time will come but for now I cannot guarantee that you're gonna fit, fit this tire into a standard Brompton but you might you might because 
because yes it is fatter but all forts and all triangles become wider as you go down and the smaller uh, rim is going to pull everything down it's gonna the tire the center of the tire is not gonna be up here it's gonna be somewhere here so that's just something to consider now if you look at the other offerings from the Schwalbe if it's a 1.35 I recommend that you get the, the green one the green marathon it's not an expensive tire it gives you absolutely perfect protection this is the one I'm running in the rear right now and you see this is this the stock size 349 it's heavy and the PSI can only go down to 65 it's not a comfortable tire to sit on at any tire pressure I will tell you that but this green guard is it is uh, is totally enough. I've never had a flat tire with this thing. So if you want even more protection, there is the blue, and it costs more, almost twice as much. It's really not necessary for most people. I just don't I just don't see the point. This is the Big Apple, of course, the one that we have seen in the other uh, picture unfortunately they don't make it in the 1.5 or even 1.35 this is a tire I rode on my birdie for over a decade I absolutely swear by it there was never there was never never a flat with it look at the minimum PSI 30 PSI how comfortable is that and it's not a, that heavy a tire for an urban tire or for touring never had a flat with it look at look at what what it comes with the rubber is not that thick and it has two tapes it's really n not more than the tire liner which you can buy so I'm not giving up on the tire liner just yet in order to run a tire of this width you definitely would have to upgrade you definitely would have to upgrade the the rim you have to get a smaller rim a, a 305 diameter rim I don't think it has to be wider although you want to you may want to check because the tire the the company should give you a description of what kind of rim they require also if you want to mount if you want to mount uh, fenders the stock fenders are not going to fit this this is requires custom fenders and you, you have fender attachments because of the disc brakes it's it's kind of easier to mount them you don't have to worry about the brakes but it has to be a custom job I would say that's gonna cost you about minimum two hundred dollars for some classy wooden fenders but this is like the dream tire to, to get for commuting if you have the rims to run it and you you have to replace not just the rim but the triangle and uh, the fork as well these other other marathon tires they don't they don't come in a small size or do they this is the green marathon that I just checked out that one is available but the other one Billy Bunkers and all these these are bigger fatter tires they don't come in a smaller size so this is about the fattest thing you can you can cram in this one this one the scorcher this is guaranteed to work it works for me but it's a very thin racing tire it's very light it it has super grip on on dry pavement but off-road is not that easy with it and uh, definitely in, in uh, wet weather I, this is not the tire I would recommend and that you have to put in a tire liner unless you want to deal with the, the flats it can be mounted on on your bike with the standard fenders but you have to remove the top brace in the rear not in the front front is completely okay so I hope I explained everything about uh, where we are with tires for the Brompton if anybody if anybody purchased this new tire this green marathon which I had never seen before I'm curious about the opinions what do you think about this tire I assume it's not any more comfortable than the other marathons this is going to be about the same thing it's just a different pattern and apparently it's a very green tire it's mostly recycled plastic blah 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 but this is really interesting for me if anybody tried to fit this a 16 by 1.75 but with a custom rim you could 
you could hold on to the existing hub existing everything you only need to replace the spokes and the rim to get it smaller to 305 and I wonder if this would fit but I guess that's an exper that's an expensive experiment and, and we don't have any any way of, of making sure that that you will find any f tires at all at 16 by 1.75 that's ever gonna fit so this is it for uh, tires for now and um, I'll be back at the next video Feel free to subscribe and follow.